Hello everybody, it's Michelle here with Angel Souls. Thank you so much for joining me. Before we get started here for this message, and it is timeless for whenever you find it, please check the description box because I may have lives going on. As a matter of fact, I am going to try to have another casual hangout live and probably a live on what we call past lives because someone suggested it. Thank you. And also on angel numbers. So again, the timing of that, not sure about it just yet, but always check the description box. As of the recording of this video, I'm still offering live video readings. Email me at angelsouls444 at gmail.com to see what the availability is and the pricing. And of course, I still have my standard readings over at angelsouls444.com. Check out Gumroad, all the goods. All the goods are down there. Yeah, so first and foremost, we are seeing, they're, they're seeing a crack in time in time as we as we perceive it and that's so funny because uh my writing over at substack i use that term <laughs> and I, I wrote that a long time ago and it's coming up again so you might want to check that out by the way uh so yeah so there's like this crack in time and something has shifted obviously and people are not knowing what to do with it so there's a lot of power struggles a lot of people doubting themselves Really anything that we need to understand about how we approach things, okay, as individuals and as a collective, it's now blaringly in our face for examination. And a lot of people, because that's all we've ever known, okay, whatever injustice, that's all we've ever known. So we don't know what to call it. We don't know how to move forward necessarily. We don't know what the right way forward is. Uh, people will say, yeah, we do, but... There's always a reality behind everything, all right? For some of you out there, hmm, yeah, it's like a, a deep splitting, okay? So this has been coming up as a thing, but some people are doing the internal work. It just depends on where you are on your soul's path. Again, that's why a personal reading is good. Uh, or just you're very clear on what you want and now you're going for it. There's... Uh, some of you who are being less afraid to go after what you want. Okay, I'm just going to read this one right now. This is the number 10, the wheel. It's Archangel Jeremiah. Jeremiah is all about life review. And that's kind of what we're getting at here. It's like you're assessing, okay, what holds me up? I need to heal that. Or I don't like how this is going in my world. Why do I keep accepting it and, and being willing to move on from that? So what it feels like, is through that review, yes, you're getting into a place where you're making plans to move on to something different, but along the way, there are going to be a lot of epiphanies popping up, <laughs> okay? And it's sort of like, well, I thought I was going to get that job. It went to someone else, and okay, I kind of I kind of see why that person got the job, and do I even really want that? What am I really going for, right? It's that sort of thing. Or for some of you, if you've been, let's say, madly in love with someone and you haven't been able to let go, it starts coming up in your consciousness how that person treated you before. And you might go, what was I doing? I'm moving on, right? It's that sort of thing. And this says new beginnings, end of delays, a change in direction that offers happiness. See, you're assessing and figuring out where you want to be and where you want to go. Okay, I must have bumped my camera because when I sat, it was fine. And then as I started going on, it was like all weird. So I'm sorry, I had to stop there and fix it. All right, so anyway, the wheel, we're having a new beginning, a fresh start. But this is, it doesn't have the feeling, like you can't apply the old rules to this. So maybe previously you're like, okay, I'm ambitious. I know exactly where I want to go. I'm going to go in that direction. It's not that. I know, it's a little weird. I don't think any of us know what to do with it. So... You know, we'll just kind of have to go along with it, go with the flow here. Yeah, I'm hearing things come to you easier when you don't push. So there's a big leap. <laughs> and understanding ourselves as energetic beings. Yeah. Realizing your good fortune, first of all, doesn't look the way you had anticipated. And the approach is not what you thought. So be ready. It feels nice, but a little, what it, what it feels like is I feel nervous. It's like, okay, it feels a little bit better. Like I'm not so 
stressed out and a lot of adrenaline going through my body, but okay, can I trust this? That's what it is. I'm nervous. I get this nervous feeling. Can I trust this direction? It seems too easy, right? And yeah, I mean, you always want to watch for things that are too good to be true, but it's really about tuning into our instincts and they're showing me the gut. So some of you might've been like, well, my intuition, that's all well and good, but the intuition is going to set off something in the body to let you know if that will translate into a physical reality. Okay. So again, all, you know, well and good to be thinking about something intuitively, but in your body, what does it feel like? Talk about love. Let's talk about karmic relationships if you believe in that. Um, soulmates. I mean, you might know somebody who you definitely say, oh, that's my soulmate. But when you think about being with them in this reality, your stomach twists. And you know that maybe on a higher plane, you guys are connected, but the way the personalities have expressed through these human bodies, it's not going to work out. You feel me? This is where people get hung up on the, oh, but that's my divine counterpart as I say that the empress comes out that's my person you know or whatever but maybe it's just not working in the 3d okay it gets complicated I guess so we have the empress archangel Gabriel before I read all of this I'm going to give you what I'm feeling and that is trust yourself trust your creative abilities uh, remember that you're a co-creative being so getting out of that it's hard when you, when you have a lot of stuff going on, it's hard to pick yourself up out of that and realize, you know, I have some control here too. When it feels like everyone is bombarding you or situations are bombarding you. But the Empress, uh, initially, again, just what I'm picking up about this, this is imperative to your new beginning, giving birth to a new chapter of your life. And again, trusting your creative abilities and knowing your worth. Knowing your worth, if people have always diminished you or told you that you can't do something, this, this especially feels like the diminishment of the divine feminine energy, okay? And that is starting to turn over. It's going to be a process, but pretty soon we're going to start honoring things that are generally considered more feminine, all right? So just keep that in mind. We have Archangel Gabriel here. So if you are looking to get pregnant, yes, this is an indication of pregnancy. And, you know, Gabriel helps with pregnancy and conception and all that. But if you're trying to get pregnant, please make sure that you are trying to get pregnant for the right reasons. Not because you're trying to just live up to a societal expectation. Okay. And obviously here in the U.S., we have a lot of issues around that. So that's as far as I'm going with that one because I'll get riled. <laughs> Time to act upon your plans. Creativity is rewarded. See, luxurious or abundant resources. Again, not overcomplicating things and realizing in a way that there is help here. Obviously, your spiritual team is going to be helping you, but you have to give birth to it. So taking this divine energy and allowing it to come through you as the human conduit. <laughs> okay. So it's not, that's where we get into this thing where people are like, Oh, I'm going to manifest. I'm going to manifest. And they're doing all the beautiful spiritual work, but then something gets lost in translation as it's trying to come through. And often what that is, by the way, we can do a whole live on manifestation too, if you want. Um, but what ends up happening is as it's coming through, it, it's not going to look the same or be able to exist in the same manner that it does in spirit when it comes into the 3d different frequency, okay? Different realm, different dimension. So yeah, things need to be adjusted, all right? And so when people can't make it look exactly the way it does in a higher realm or their high idea, right? They might get frustrated. They might want to start blaming everybody. They might be frustrated with life. That is the art here. That's To me, that's what the wheel and the empress is talking about here, being able to Assess what works for you. What makes you feel fortunate? What do you want to give birth to? And can you accept that challenge of, of being the interpreter between a, a divine, a divinely guided idea, perhaps, or just what I've been saying is a higher idea and making it mean something in this world. Don't let yourself get frustrated. There's something that's going to be coming forward around that. Hope that makes sense. Five of Ariel. Okay, so this can feel very unsupported, not trusting. There's a whole thing here of not trusting. You know, the world has rejected me before, or my family has rejected me, or my workplace has rejected me 
love partners have rejected me. I give up. It's better that I just brave the elements than try to accept help that's right behind me. Okay. That's what's going on here in this card. I would rather just live on my own than accept the help because that help's going to come at a cost or, you know, that help is going to be like, well, we're going to help you, but now you owe us, like I said, coming at a cost and you owe us through your beliefs. There's a lot of that because that is a church that is behind there. So that to me, again, in the context of this reading is saying, it's sort of like, we'll adopt you into our community, but you had better follow our rules. This is who you are now, and this is how you will behave, okay? I'm not saying all religious organizations are like that, but it, it just has this sort of dogma sense, just for this card spread, okay? And this says, you needn't go through your current challenges alone. Help is nearby. Negative thoughts create self-fulfilling prophecies. Again, this to me is absolutely about not trusting. And Ariel is about Earth, okay? So not trusting this human existence, not trusting. If you're a sensitive being, you have for a very long time looked around and been like, you know, this world is weird. <laughs> People are cruel to each other. Why? Why would they be, why would you want to feel that? What are you getting out of that, right? So all of these things, and this is sort of, I'm going to call this in the context of this reading. I know some of you like, you know, very traditional tarot people are going to be like, that's not what that card means. I know. Well, first of all, this isn't a strict tarot deck, okay? This is infused with angelic energy so that we can do this. Um, so it's a little bit different. But um, the, the tarot is very fourth dimensional energy. It's closer to third dimensional energy, which is what we are in. That's why tarot, if done by the right person with the right intentions, can be amazing for practical advice, okay? So this deck that I'm using... Again, I don't think that you can use a strict tarot deck, oh, this is going to be so controversial, to channel angels because, <laughs> again, it's a fourth dimensional energy. It doesn't mean that a practitioner can't pop out and go into a higher dimension to bring in angels, but it's not literally coming through the cards. These have very purposefully been sort of imbued with angelic symbolism and stuff like that. Make sense? Okay. So, and I say that because someone asked a very excellent question about that. That's just my take on it. But for me, this five of Ariel in this context is I'm fed up. I'm fed up with this earth existence. I'm going to reject the help. Now let's hang with this for a second. There's a little bit, there, there's a nuanced message here of, okay, help is there, but maybe you want to reject it because you've been burned before. Or you don't want to play the game anymore. You'd rather find your own more organic path, perhaps, than to trust perhaps a big organization. Or it's, it, it's an interesting message because it's not saying that you can't take an opportunity if it's from like a mainstream source. I mean, again, just tune into your body. Your body will let you know if this is the next right thing. Because sometimes people on their soul's contract, you end up getting you know, guided to be somewhere because you need to be around those people or you need to learn something through that experience. So if you reject that constantly, do you feel me? You're not going to learn that lesson. Conversely, if you have been there, done that, that's what this feels like. Been there, done that. I want to strike out on my own. I want to do my own thing, which I think is an energy of a lot of people right now. A lot of people are tired of, um, you know, corporations controlling us and, and all of that or feeling like we have to lean on the game in order to be able to take care of ourselves. So this could be, I mean, you might reinvent yourself so much. Some of you out there are gonna to decide to live off the grid, okay? Or some of you might say, I'm not gonna wait for permission. I've said this a million times before. I'm not gonna wait for permission to have a voice. I'm not gonna wait for permission from some corporation to validate my work. We don't need to live like that anymore. There are too many resources out there to be able to put your stuff out there and let the audience decide whether they want to partake in it or not. And not having a corporate marketing middleman, not that marketing has to be evil. I mean, we all have to do that for our businesses and everything, but not depending on someone else's opinion to see if other people get to see it or not. You feel me? So that's what the five of Ariel is really throwing off to me. Like 
I'm going to find my own way. I'm going to carve my own path. Ooh, and now we're free. <laughs> I love this. Oh, yeah. Okay, so this is Ace of Raphael. I'm leaving the nonsense behind. Bye, y'all. If you want to keep messing around with all that over there, by all means do it. I'm finding my own path. I'm going to accept myself, and I'm going to remember that I always have me. And this is very freeing. This is what brings you that emotional fulfillment. It's beautiful. Okay, a positive new emotional experience, fulfilling romantic relationships. So that's another big piece here too. When maybe if you've been getting hung up on some sort of soul connection and let's say the other party is just not showing up and you move on and someone beautiful comes in. And what's more like you hopefully have um, healed enough that you know what a healthy relationship looks like and so when someone comes in and they start love bombing, you know that's not it. If someone comes in and they're respectful, they're not trying to do a power struggle with you or anything like that, you know you can engage in this. So deep and lasting spiritual insights. So that is absolutely beautiful. That is absolutely beautiful. So there is that part. I didn't bring the color cards over. <gasps> no, I've never done. Did I? I didn't bring them over. Oh, Okay, well, sorry y'all, I don't even know where they are. That's weird. <laughs> They're always on my desk. So I'm gonna use the Magdalene Oracle for our extra second deck. I know we shouldn't read into everything when we're talking spirituality, but that's a little weird. I always have that deck around. <laughs> okay, okay, we're gonna trust it. And anyway, I feel drawn to this, so that's good. There it is, surrender. There it is, that's the big message here, surrender to this. Because what you told, what you were told was a good thing, you're realizing isn't. What you were told is valuable, you're realizing has blocked you from your happiness. Convincing you that everything is going to make you sick so that a remedy can be sold to you. Um, convincing you that the only way to live is to be in a toxic work environment and nobody talks about the toxicity. I've given examples about abuse and harassment in a workplace and people told me to get over it. That's just how it is. And threats and intimidation and all kinds of stuff. We get so trained to think that that's normal. And what it actually does is attract in, quite frankly, evil people who do see that as fun. Drama is fun. Gossip is fun. Give me, you know, give me the gossip, you know, all of that. So a lot of you watching this, you see it now. You realize that was, uh, it's like being under a spell. It was like being under a spell and now you're letting that go, which is a beautiful thing. Yes. <laughs> very happy for us. Okay. <laughs> this is a very good message here. Beautiful message. The judgment. Ooh, okay, there we go. So we are breaking out of something here. I'm hearing, uh, this isn't the justice card, but like I'm hearing justice is served. Um, this, I'm telling you, the whole message here is just reassessing, reassessing. And, and f again, this goes with this Archangel Jeremiah energy. Goes with that, you know, like uh, let's, let's look at this. How, what have I done? What have I not done? what still needs to be done and and you know giving birth to a new way a new beginning rising up from this <laughs> okay so that is the big energy going on here comment down below let me know how this is playing out in your world this is a safe place for you to talk about your spiritual experiences okay so just bear that in mind we're going to leave it there i'm sending you all so much love and take care